All right. So in in this kind of exercise, I'm going to kind of go through what I have for as far as fantasy rankings for these running backs. I know your system is not necessarily geared towards fantasy. Um, and I don't know if, if you would say those things are one and the same or not. I think they might be a little different. I don't necessarily want to talk about Robinson or Gibbs, but we can discuss some of these other guys and tell me where I'm out of line and 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 what your thoughts on some of these guys. Um, there's actually one or two guys that I definitely want to talk about in your rankings because I, I haven't seen anybody as high on uh, Tyon Evans as, as you. So I definitely want to get your thoughts on him. But uh, right now I got Bijan, Gibbs, uh, Bijan by himself in a tier, Gibbs by himself in a tier. Then I got Charbonnet um, and probably in a tier by himself just because – I just like he just it was like one of the easier evals that I did uh, through all the running backs. It just was pretty straightforward. He can catch well. He's flexible for a big guy. He wasn't super stiff, but I think in the right, you know, there's not a whole lot of them these days, but in the right system and the right person, like he could he could be projected as a three down back um, in the league as, as far as my and he doesn't uh, binary scouting goes really need a great like it doesn't matter the landing spot almost to me with Charbonnet. You could kind of put him anywhere, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, and so the next ones for me, which I think that's pretty consensus for as far as fantasy goes. I don't know how uh, Matt doesn't have Charbonnet up at three, but we can no. Right? But and the next yeah. guy I think is is not going to be popular for a lot of people. But I, th- I think you will be like I got Zach Evans still at, on the next probably a tier away from Charbonnet. But I'm I'm going to put Zach Evans up in there. Um, and I also have Kendra Miller in that next tier for me. Um, and then I would probably tear down a little bit but spears could be up in that next tier for me but i got him down and then i have tank bigsby and then i have izzy and chase brown kind of all jumbled up in a tier and then i have kind of roshan tucker mcbride and and then i have a a chain off to the side um because i'm i just i love the guy i just as far as fantasy wise you know and we can kind of circle back to this at the end uh as far as fantasy wise he really needs to go to the right spot and the right coach and give him the right usage to be relevant to me fantasy week in week out for at least some of the capital that some of these guys so far look like they're going to spend on a chain um and it's you know we just he's just 185 pounds he's awesome he's doesn't look like he's he, he doesn't play doesn't, like he's 185 mm-hmm. pounds but you know it just he just has to be with and and how many coaches do we really trust all that much to properly use the guys how we we see fit um so Let's circle back to a chain at the end there, but that was kind of my spiel, but back me up or, or tell me where I'm wrong. But Zach Evans up, up at the top there, man, I'm just, I'm just not that. I don't know. I I think this is a nice crop of running backs. I know people are kind of down on, on the skill positions in general, but I thought Zach Evans was one of the better pure runners that we saw. Um, And I I grade my stuff a little more binary than, than you do. You're, you're very, you're analytical in your film watching, whereas I'm a little bit more ones and zeros on some things, but you know, people wanted to knock the vision. I didn't really see that at all. Like I thought it was pretty good. Like there's multiple times where I see him manipulating defenders, sucking up to the line and then popping around and, and his movement skills are really good. He's, he's uh what's the thing that Angelo always says? Uh, I think uh, that uh, actually Waldman brought it up on the show, the curvy linear movement. Does it, does oh, yeah, he have yeah. some of that? He's got some of that, right? He's like, He's, he's he's a pretty good bender there. And, yeah, you know, I, I, he, the speed seems good. The power seems really good. Um, really, the only thing I could maybe give him a ding for and it be the hands maybe aren't the most natural hands, but they're not terrible. And I've always been a guy that like like Kenny Walker. I went to battle for Kenny Walker last year. I'm like, just because this guy doesn't have that many catches on tape and he might have a drop or two. You think a guy who is this skilled and works this hard can't figure out how to catch some balls like i just it just doesn't make any sense to me that we're so caught up in a threshold of these guys like yeah i'm not going to make that exception for everybody but guys who are as talented as uh kenneth walker were and guys who are as talented talented as zach evans were um or is i I, i'm i'm willing to make that exception and if you want to throw the red flags in there you certainly can but i don't really see them as much of a red flag at all um the transfers i guess but like he was out snapping Kendra Miller and was crushing him in 2021. Miller had like f- under five uh, carries through 
you know, the first like six or seven games, then Evans gets turf toe. Then Kendra comes in and, and does his thing. And Kendra has a nice game, but you know, those first, you know, after the Duquesne game, Evans was ridiculous uh, through that stretch. And then he goes to Ole Miss and yeah, the, does he, does he take control of the backfield? No, but Judkins was freaking awesome, man. Like clocked at 22 and a half miles an hour, like maybe the best freshman in the nation, just because he didn't necessarily beat that guy out and was the workhorse in that thing. Doesn't, throw up crazy red flags to me. I just really don't understand the Evans discourse all that much. And I, I'm still throwing them right up high. Um, your thoughts on, on this running back group. And, and I know I just threw a lot at you, but yeah, no, take it okay. wherever you'd like. Yeah, I love it. So let's start with this. The running back class as a whole, I think this is a good draft class. I think the quarterback, you know, the top three quarterbacks are strong. The tight ends, there's literally eight players awesome. that I would consider awesome. that you'd want to start. The wide receiver class is the strangest one. It could sure. there's a very slight chance that it could be the best that we've ever seen. I don't think it's gonna happen. There, a lot of things would have to happen, but there's some good talent there that that you know can get better. It's just strange because the second tier can be better than the first tier. The running back class, there's 12 guys on this board that I think could be serious contributors, um, if not starters. And six of them, I think, can be starters right now. And one of them, absolutely, without a doubt, is everything you said about Zach Evans. Zach Evans, it, to me, is could very easily be in the same conversation as B. John Robinson and Jameer Gibbs if he just winds up on a, you know, with a good fit and gets and the the off-field stuff isn't anything more than smoke because I think it's just smoke from what I can tell, but I don't grade off field usually, but I did dig into it a little bit. And what I did find was this. Okay. He was a, as a high school kid, he was a five-star quarterback. All right, fine. Our five-star running back. And they said that he had run-ins with his coaches. His coaches said he really, he was really a good kid. One of the run-ins that they described, and usually when they say run-ins, it's usually one thing. Sure. You know, they say, right. you know, the one thing is that he got suspended for his championship game. Sure. Now, the that's phone. a yeah, Whatever. the cell phone. Exactly. Whatever. <laughs> now, now, his parents, uh, the best I would describe it is that his parents didn't seem like they were in a position or had the wherewithal to really be the guidance for him that he that you would want during recruiting. The one that would have been that was his grandfather but and who was a big influence on his life now zach evans has been a good student in high school and in college right that's yeah. another plus made the freshman three, seven, all, all uh all academic team that's right 375 gpa you know he his grandfather passed away the year before he decided to take on his own recruiting so you could see how a kid who's maybe you know any kid even a smart kid who may just doesn't have the maturity at that age to feel like that they don't want to let go of their phone before their championship game because they're they're not sure they're going to sign with Georgia, Alabama, <laughs> sure. Texas, right. whatever. Just name, image, and likeness, dog. Come on, man. Yeah, like he's probably wondering who's going to be calling me and what's what's going to go down. So he probably could have screwed that up easily. I know my kids would have, and I and <laughs> I think my kids have turned out pretty okay. So you know, but that's part of what goes on with that. So he goes to TCU, like you said, everything you said. Couldn't say anything different. What I will say is that when he transferred, it's not like he transferred to Central Arkansas or <laughs> sure. Kent State. He said right. transferred to a mid-level SEC team. And I would say that's probably a transfer up rather than any. If you want to, you could go lateral, I guess. But I mean, I'd go up probably yeah. in competition at the time. And it sure. was, and even though sure. it didn't work out that way, that TCU became a national championship contending team and played in the national championship. Oh, game. Sure, sure. But let's, let's look at this in perspective because this time last year, Gary Patterson was telling anyone he could that his, his school needed to get their NIL deals together quickly because he was anticipating 30 players transferring out. If it didn't That's a happen number. I didn't, yeah. I never, I've never heard that. Yeah. That was on a TCU board and it was on a TCU, um, TCU, um, coverage site, you know, like that, that devoted to the team about, you know, covering that school, 30 players. So no one expected them to be a national championship team. Maybe sure. that was rhetoric to like get TCU to get on the stick, but there was a concern. A lot of people are going to transfer. So let's, let's hold our horses. Zach Evans to me is a very polished back. He is very creative back. 
um, because he understands how to turn losses into gains. He turns he turns trash plays into at least a short gain, which is what yeah. makes you a good NFL back, not the 80-yard runs. It's whether you can be consistent to keep the team's chains moving, and he can do that as well as give you a 40, 50, 60-yard run. I agree with the hands. Not going to say any more about Evans because – I usually have to. You did it for me, and you did a great job with it. <laughs> okay. Um, you How know, Kendra, and I didn't mean, I'm not like the other thing is, is like Evans came out of there, and, and yeah, Kendra took over, and you could say, well, Kendra was maybe pushed. Like, I think Kendra is awesome, and Quentin Judkins was awesome. He was in between yeah. two awesome backs. Yeah. I think. He went, and Ole Miss, he got to be Mr. Outside to Judkins, Mr. Inside. Right. So they didn't really even use him completely to the way that he could have been because he was in a split. So, Let's, you know, you got to look at the TCU tape and the old miss tape. And when you put that together, to me, he's a top five running back in this class. And again, if someone told me that none of the stuff that there's really not much of an issue with him or he improves his receiving game just a touch, I think he's one of the better blockers in this class, actually. So on top of that, if you put him in the same conversation of Robinson and Gibbs, and like eventually that happens, I would not be surprised. Um, now, Kendra Miller, like him a lot. He reminds me of Lamar Miller, really smooth, smooth accelerator, has some suddenness to his game, can certainly drop the pads and get some and, and run for some power or have some contact balance. He's going to get there as a blocker. He's going to get there as a receiver. There, There's just some technical issues that cause him to not do quite as well against more refined coverage or more refined um, defenders who can – you know, who can see what's coming or telegraph some things, but it's, they're not hard fixes. So overall, I'm a big Kendra filler, man, Zach Charbonnet. I like Charbonnet. He's actually fifth on my board. I agree with you. He can run. Yeah, there you go. He can run, um, <laughs> you know, he can run gapper zone. He's scheme versatile. He's a very good blocker. He's only, he's one of the better blockers in his class at this position. Um, and he's someone that, you know, maybe doesn't have great, metrics but he has he's above the threshold for a starter that's mm -hmm. good enough the, right. too many fantasy people go well if it's not a four oh, three God. or a four it, it four, absolutely it drains us that if they're not yeah. the, the top five players in the entire league at the position then they stink like yes yeah. we're not it's watching like, talented good nights if you ain't first or yeah. last like settle exact. down i was Thank high you. when i said that you know Thank you. Yes, because <laughs> that's like it's like Aaron. Do you remember Aaron Foster running a four seven six forty? Sure, he seemed to get it done pretty well. And Zach Charbonnet to me is a is not quite Aaron Foster, but stylistically there's some similarities to their game. He and Alexander Madison have some you know some similarities, and I think he's going to be better than Alexander Madison, who I thought was a very polished player who just didn't quite have maybe certain elite athletic skills that really was going to make a huge difference, but he's right. still going to be a decent starter. So you've got those. I'm a big Tajay Spears fan. I think so you that, would move up. You would have Spears for sure up with Evans and Kendra up, up in there and he, and, and above yep. and above Charbonnet. And what, what do you like? No, the double ACLs don't scare you off of, of Tajay and non power five doesn't scare you off of Tajay. No, because when you watch his game, the things that I grade for are behaviors that I – and I'm always projecting behaviors based on what I see in the NFL. I'm always looking at NFL players every week during the year and looking at what are the techniques, what are the skills, what am I looking for baseline for speed, quickness. And when he does face a team like you know, UCA, USC and dominates them, you know, I feel pretty good about that too. But it's really more about the behaviors because I've seen guys like – um, Matt Forte on a Tulane team years ago where the they had one offensive lineman who could outlift the worst lifter on LSU's team at that time. You know, this was <laughs> with Glenn true. Dorsey and like national championship team. That whole team could outlift everybody on Tulane except for one offensive lineman. And he averaged one point, I think either like 1.9 or two point something yards per carry in that game. And I had him graded out as an NFL starter. Ahmad Bradshaw, Joseph Adai, other guys that I also had that facing top defenses where their teams were overwhelmed against national championship caliber teams, whether it was Adai against Auburn when Auburn was a national champion or Tennessee when they had a strong defense and against like guys like 
John Henderson. I don't know if it was John Henderson and those guys, but one of the stronger defenses. And Ahmad Bradshaw was at Marshall, and he was getting met in the backfield and had horrible. Those things don't matter. So, you know, Spears, if you have two ACL tears and you're still moving like that, <laughs> right, um, right. listen, you know, I, I, I know Frank that. Frank Gordon did it, baby. That's it. There you <laughs> go. And he annoyed fantasy um, analysts for five years at the end of his career because he wouldn't get off the field because he was t- still too conceptually sound. Spears, to me, understands how to dictate contact to avoid it or to avoid getting tackled because, like Jamal Charles, you can get the first hit and then quickly get off of that. He has great movement like Jamal Charles in terms of the transitions downhill from a sideline approach. Doesn't need more than one step. Usually doesn't need any steps. Which, and when you can do that going to the far side line as an approach, and then you get downhill with no transition steps, you're special. Um, great receiver, really good rot runner. Watch mm-hmm. the Houston game. If yeah. anybody needs to watch, watch the end of the Houston game, an OT where he's matched up against the corner, runs a back shoulder fade, gets it inbounds, perfect technique with positioning and what positioning after before and after the catch and at the catch point to win that ball. Um, he is a very good player, and he may not be Jamal Charles, but he's the closest thing I've seen to it, um, you know, in a while. So, do would, do you think that that though because of maybe where he came from, do you do you? typically say that those guys might need a a half a season or a season to acclimate a little more than maybe somebody like that's coming from Ole Miss or, you know, like a Zach Evans or that's seen maybe a little bit higher caliber of play and players or not too lane. If if he was like a A shepherd, you know, know, if he's a shepherd, that's a different story. (laughs) Division two. Yes. FCS. Yes. Tulane. They face enough decent talent that I'm okay with it. Um, He will, but the where you might say he needs more time is like Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles was a kid. I always say he was like the he was the kid doing physics experiments in his basement that that you could probably put do at Caltech. Um, but he was like getting a C minus in, in algebra because he was he was he was too busy and preoccupied doing other stuff and didn't do his homework. Right. You know, he was always trying to bounce things two, three gaps across in Texas and trying to make the insane play. And sometimes he'd do it. And Todd Haley was like, dude, you gotta you gotta stop this mess. And he had to acclimate and figure out what he could do and not in the NFL. Tajay might do the same thing because he's very daring and that might take him a year, but I think he's gonna be a good committee back if not a lead back starter i think he's gonna be a good starter yeah i i I really like spears um as well um so so you're saying that he is a good receiver despite i don't think he had too many receptions on his record but you like um i think the abilities here yeah got it somewhere here like leonard fournette like jonathan taylor they didn't have a lot of catches but they could catch the ball and they showed that melvin gordon was another one like that yeah he can catch the ball uh, he, career career forty six receptions um, had twenty two had twenty two yeah. last year yeah that's enough <laughs> yeah, that's, that's he, enough for me he, yeah I, I saw if you said I career six see. I'd be yeah. a little worried right. career sixteen maybe anything over right. twenty I'm okay with sure um, all right so let's I, I know you got a, one or two guys on here that are that are uh, probably not on a whole lot of other people's boards give me give me some quick thoughts on on guys like Tank. Uh, Izzy and, and Chase Brown because I like Chase Brown a good a good bit as well a little little older maybe not the most powerful guy but man is he a whole lot of fun to watch and I think he's a really good receiver um, he 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 has a whole lot of great plays on tape um, as a receiver Izzy's kind of got that home run ability but sometimes I don't think his vision is the best um, if we want to knock visions and then um, Tank I just I don't know, man. I, I I can't seem to quit him, and nobody else seems to like him quite as much as I do. But like, I just I, like every game you you get to see a flash of of something great. I don't think the O line was helping him out, and then I, I think the receiving chops are underrated a little bit with with Tank, and it almost seemed like this year, like hey, they kind of knew that it, it wasn't going great in the running game, and and we they they did seem to make at least a little bit more effort to throw it his way, and and then you could get a little bit glimpse into what he can do moving around on the field and making people miss. So, um, what are your thoughts on those three guys? And then give us a little tie on Evans uh, okay. chat. Sure. Well, Izzy Evan Conda is certainly. I think he's like Damian Harris. He's a he's a steady back who can give you starter level production. Maybe he'll develop into more than that. 
like you said, okay, he's a little better zone runner than a gap runner. With gap running, oftentimes what you want to see is a guy approach the puller from the inside shoulder and press that inside shoulder and work to the outside shoulder if the guy's pulling to the outside. Opposite way if he's pulling to the inside. Um, He doesn't always do that very well. He doesn't have great stop-start acceleration in the sense of he can accelerate initially. But if he has to stop his feet and re-accelerate, it's not as strong as other backs who are really top athletes. And that's a good skill to have as a running back that he doesn't quite have. Um, but he has good burst. He has top speed. Um, he's certainly got the size. He can break tackles. Um, and I think he could contribute right now. So he's a good enough back to contribute right now. I just I look at him that he's probably better fit in the zones in a zone scheme. Um, and a lot of teams are running gap more and more gap because defenses are getting spread out and those safeties disguised as linebackers are playing in the box a lot more. So teams are getting to dominate that way. So I like him. Um, I, you know, if, if he has a good season, I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm not counting on him to come in and be an immediate starter. I'm more of a contributor. Um, Chase Brown, kind of the similar thing for me in that, um, I agree with you. The hands are good. He's explosive. Um, He certainly has certain plays that he does a really good job with in terms of setting things up. He's a good zone runner. I think he's a little better zone runner than gap runner, but not not as much of a difference as where there is one for Abinaconda. Um, So Brown I like. The things that kind of worry me about him is that he needs to – Uh, maximize space against penetration to where he's not working into the penetration so that he can avoid defenders a little bit better. Um, Part of that is learning to open your hips um, and he can do that to a degree, but he can do it a little too wide and then winds up off balance or not being able to maximize the, the, the burst that he can get outside of a defender when he, when he steps off of that. He also tends to turn his back into defenders to finish plays and that turns a lot of scouts off. Yeah, um, I've seen him on plays catch a ball against Iowa, a uh, play on Iowa where he caught the ball and literally turned his back to the oncoming cornerback and ran backwards like four <laughs> yards. And I would never seen that before. It was really weird. But I think he can, regardless of that, I still think that there's a little – he's like a, a aspirational Khalil Herbert to me, who I really like Khalil Herbert. I thought Khalil Herbert was kind of a – a starter kit for um, Dalvin Cook and could be a starter pretty quickly. He was not that far away. I think Chase Brown maybe has a couple pieces missing more than like the one piece and the paint job that, Mm -hmm. that, That you know, Herbert had. And then, you know, but you know, to me, he's comparable to say Duke Johnson, you know, like he could, and Duke Johnson just couldn't stay healthy. Duke Johnson Mm -hmm. could stay healthy. He, he'd still be playing. He had some flashes there. Yeah. So and then the third guy, um, Ty, a little Tyon Evans, but who was the, the other? Was it Tyon uh, Evans? I, I, I was. Guy? I just was curious on on your thoughts on Tank Tank Bigsby. Tank, yes, Tank. Um, I really wanted to like him. Um, <laughs> that's not, I that's feel like that's start. everybody's starter. Yeah, I really wanted to like him. Um, you hate him. That's still, a nice way of saying it. <laughs> yeah, I don't hate him, but I'm disappointed with what where he wound up for me. I'm not mad. I still I'm just see, disappointed. Yeah, that's how we look at it. He's a he's a uh, things kids hate to hear, right? Right. The, a capable backup or valuable committee piece is something that I think he can be. Okay. Um, maybe in two two to three years he can be more. But like to me, I see like a guy who's aspirational. Bilal Powell. He'll run hard. He his speed and quickness have improved. He gets impatient with certain looks and when defenses can clog creases he tries to bounce things outside way too much like he doesn't take the he doesn't take he doesn't make lemons into lemonade or take turn lemons into lemonade like zach evans does he needs to learn to do that um his footwork he has a lot of different types of footwork um skills but he doesn't combine them always in the best combinations and that hurts him it makes him a little more inefficient he needs to kind of straighten that out a bit um, I think he'll play in the league for a while. I think he'll have some good fantasy games. I just don't think he's a guy that we're going to be looking at and going, he might be the guy who has one good year and then the teams are trying to draft somebody else and yeah. keep him as a backup. Um, gotcha. Tyon, I think he's sneaky good. He's out of Louisville, transferred yeah. from Tennessee, transferred from Hutchinson Community College, 5'9", 225, 4'5", speed, 
runs through around you or um, or past you. Um, good footwork, developing as a blocker, but like shows a lot of good things that I think he'll he'll make up the gap rather quickly within a season. Um, good, decent enough pass catcher that I think he'll make up the gap again as well. Um, and so when you look at all that together, I just see a guy who really knows how to move. He really seems to understand that what he knows how to do, he really seems to understand it. And a lot of those things translate well to the NFL. Yeah. Are we, we, uh, we have Angelo on a couple times a year and he's a big movement guy. So I'll be interested to see what his thoughts are on Angelo's fun. He's a good guy. And, and yeah. I've had him on my shows too. And, and, you know, kudos for you guys to having him because he's good people. He's a good yeah. analyst. Yeah. He's, he's, his, He's he's really good with, with especially the running backs, and I know you're a running back lover uh, as well. So tie on interesting, and then you know let's circle back and, and close it up with a chain. What 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 are we doing with a chain? Because I'm I'm so again I like the player. I think he, he certainly he can run between the tackles just fine. Really, I mean at the end of the day, sometimes you do see him just absolutely just get stopped dead in his tracks. Um, by some 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 bigger, more powerful guys, but good receiver, great speed. But how will the usage be? And can we trust the people that are, you know, drafting him to make him usable as a fantasy asset for us? I think it's a great um, lead in and great analysis that you've given about him. And I'm uh, on a similar page. I said there were, you know, that for me, there were 12 backs that I think could be good contributors in this league and at least either a solid contributor or a lead back or a starter. And at the bottom of that 12 list is Devin Aching. Um, so I have a grade for him as a rotational starter. Um, I think he's an aspirational work done type of player in the sense that he, he has some power to his game, as you mentioned. He's someone that's got the great speed. Um, but that power is limited. You know, it's like he he runs inside well, he runs compact, he sets up creases well. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, when you're looking at players, and especially when you're looking for how well they do things, you know, you've got to see how they handle, whether they can run for power, run with contact balance, and handle pass protection against box defenders, defensive linemen and linebackers. And... I have some doubts that he's going to be consistently good enough. He'll do it on occasion, but consistently enough that coaches are going to say, we are afraid that he's going to get worn down and we need to use him in a specialty role. Yeah. And so that's kind of my concern with him. Now, if to me, another player that kind of fits that concern that you raised and is that is LaMichael James, the former Oregon back, mm. who I thought was a dynamic player and had Niners. some flashes with the Diners. Had yeah. some flashes there, but it just didn't quite work out. Now he owns some hamburger joints around the nation. But um, he, he James, really? yeah, he does. Good for him. I, I I was looking that up, and I saw that in the news when I was looking up Michael James recently. But I think that he's a kind of a a slightly better version of Michael James, which means that he Michael James may have been some a little too would early do for that his as a time. slight. But I don't think you're saying it as a slight. I'm not. I'm not saying it as a slight because I think LaMichael James was maybe a little bit before his time. They weren't spreading things out in San Francisco quite. They were a little bit with with Kaepernick, but Mm -hmm. they weren't doing it to the extent that these teams are doing now. And I think LaMichael James would have been better in this era. He was just slightly before his time. And I think Devin A. Chain might be able to do a little bit more for teams. Um, I just don't see him... I think you. I think our buddy Angelo is going to see him as a really good player, from what I've seen a little bit on Twitter. But I'm I'm kind of more on the level. I'm a little more cautious. I could see it getting there, but I couldn't see enough on tape to prove it. Gotcha. All right, sleepers for the running backs. What What do you? I mean, I guess Tyon for the fantasy people would certainly be a sleeper for a lot of people. I've done a million mocks, and I almost never see him go. Um, yeah. Tyon's certainly there. People love Rashawn Johnson. He's like the fam- favorite see- sleeper as well. So I understand that one. I'm going to give you two guys most people aren't talking about. Jaleel McLaughlin of Youngstown State, who is a 5'7", 187 guy, kind of a Philip Lindsay type of player, Javian Hawkins type of player. That doesn't sound all that inspiring <laughs> other than, you know, if there's a lot of injuries. But he's a smart runner, and I think it could happen for him. Like, yeah, I think he's a – 
he, he's a fun one that's worthwhile. I'll give you another one. You guys know him. You've seen him because you live in the state. And I just have heard nobody talk about him. Maybe he's not even in this class, and I made the mistake occasionally that happens. But he gives me a little bit of a Devonta Freeman vibe. And if really it all comes together, maybe a LaShawn McCoy vibe because he's in that spectrum. McCoy's like the McCoy's like that neighborhood in South Carolina by the water where like you know the the real estate owners live. You know yeah, the battery. Then, yeah, you know, and then like. Devonta Freeman's kind of more like maybe a decent Folly Beach neighborhood, you know. I don't know, <laughs> but like I think I know my South Carolina a little bit. I don't well, know that Folly not. Beach real estate is crazy right now. So it's crazy. But, okay, so yeah. maybe well, in a, you they're know. getting rid of short term rentals though. I think that might. Last time I was there, it was short term rentals, so I was kind of like that's why I was saying Devonta. It was kind of a mix. So yeah. so it's been a while since I've been there. But this guy is Christian Beale Smith out of South Carolina. Um, Christian Beal Smith. Nobody's talking about him. He's 5'8", 205. He's intriguing. You like a lot of South Carolina running backs. I feel like over the years you've had an an, affinity for the South Carolina RBs. I kind of do. Rico Dowdle and then the kid who transferred to BYU, Ty um, Williams, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's intriguing. Good creativity, footwork. Is he athletic enough for that to translate? I don't know. I think it is. But – He's interesting. He really is a a good mover too, and you know, and he was very good at um, Wake Forest. That was Wake Forest, right? Yeah, Wake Forest with Kenneth Walker there. Kenneth Walker, yeah, yeah. They were they were split in time, you mm-hmm. know, and he was good. So I think he's interesting. But my favorite sleeper, the guy that's ranked highest probably after Ty and Evans, is Christopher Brooks out of BYU. Came from Cal, who transferred from Cal as a graduate student to BYU. 6'1", 235, strong hands, can run wheel routes, can run in the end zone and come back to the ball, um, relied upon as a receiver, screen passes at Cal, all that. He's a pile mover. He will break. He breaks running. He's an old school running back who breaks tackles, who has that one cut footwork. Think Gus Edwards, Samaj P. Ryan um, at the higher end, maybe James Conner or Mike Anderson. Like if it all really comes together, I think he's yeah. A, yeah, I think he's a guy no one's talking about. Zach Zenner, I think, trains him or represents him. Um, and Christopher Brooks was really good in the Hula Bowl, the the All Star game. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I've seen on tape, I mean, he's a top fifteen back if you ask me in this class. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm love them. I have I have him as a borderline. I have I have him as a contributor. He's in my third tier. He's at the bottom of my third tier, and he can run gap or zone or wind back all all the runs that you see in the in, at the NFL level. And he did it against quality defenses. I, I think he'll be a UDFA that will make a squad, and we'll hear from him in a couple of years. That's why you need to. That's why you need to go buy the RSP because there's just all, all these nuggets in there. Just you could just really level up your knowledge right there um, with the with the sleepers and, and you know get your get your game right on on your regular old rankings going into the into your uh rookie drafts so appreciate you with with the running back knowledge here hey man it's my pleasure i appreciate you guys having me